Senior Warden. The candidate is in order, worshipful, and awaits your further will and pleasure. Worshipful Master. You will cause him to kneel on his naked knees, both hands resting on the Holy Bible, square, and compasses. Worshipful Master. Brother Gab, you are kneeling, for the third time, at the altar of masonry, to take upon yourself the solemn oath of a master mason. And I, as master of this lodge, take pleasure, as on former occasions, in informing you that there is nothing in it which will interfere with the duty you owe to your God, your neighbor, your country, or self. Are you willing to take the oath? Candidate I am. Worshipful Master. You will repeat your name, and say after me, I, Peter Gab, Master gives three raps with his gavel, when all present assemble round the altar, of my own free will and accord, in the presence of Almighty God, and this worshipful lodge, erected to him and dedicated to the Holy Saints John, do hereby and hereon most solemnly and sincerely promise and swear, that I will always hail, ever conceal, and never reveal any of the secrets, arts, parts, point or points, of the Master Mason's degree, to any person or persons homesoever, except it be to a true and lawful brother of this degree, or in a regularly constituted lodge of Master Masons, nor unto him, or them, until by strict trial, due examination, or awful information, I shall have found him, or them, as lawfully entitled to the same as I am myself. I furthermore promise and swear, that I will stand to and abide by all laws, rules, and regulations of the Master Mason's degree, and of the lodge of which I may hereafter become a member, as far as the same shall come to my knowledge. And that I will ever maintain and support the constitution, laws, and edicts of the Grand Lodge under which the same shall be holden. Further, that I will acknowledge and obey all due signs and summonses sent to me from a Master Mason's lodge, or given me by brother of that degree, if within the length of my cable toe. Further, that I will always aid and assist all poor, distressed, worthy master masons, their widows and orphans, knowing them to be such, as far as their necessities may require, and my ability permit, without material injury to myself and family. Further, that I will keep the worthy brother master masons' secrets inviolable, when communicated to and received by me as such, murder and treason excepted. Further, that I will not aid, nor be present at, the initiation, passing, or raising of a woman, an old man in his dotage, a young man in his nonage, an atheist, a madman, or fool, knowing them to be such. Further, that I will not sit in a lodge of clandestine-made masons, nor converse on the subject of masonry with a clandestine-made mason, nor one who has been expelled or suspended from a lodge, while under that sentence, knowing him or them to be such. Further, I will not cheat, wrong, nor defraud a master mason's lodge, nor a brother of this degree, knowingly, nor supplant him in any of his laudable undertakings, but will give him due and timely notice, that he may ward off all danger. Further, that I will not knowingly strike a brother master mason, or otherwise do him personal violence in anger, except in the necessary defense of my family or property. Further, that I will not have illegal carnal intercourse with a master mason's wife, his mother, sister, or daughter nor suffer the same to be done by others, if in my power to prevent. Further, that I will not give the Grand Masonic word, in any other manner or form than that in which I shall receive it, and then in a low breath. Further, that I will not give the Grand Hailing signs of distress, except in case of the most imminent danger, in a just and lawful lodge, or for the benefit of instruction. And if ever I should see it given, or hear the words accompanying it, by a worthy brother in distress, I will fly to his relief, if there is a greater probability of saving his life than losing my own. All this I most solemnly, sincerely promise and swear, with a firm and steady resolution to perform the same, without any hesitation, mental reservation, or secret evasion of mind whatever, binding myself, under no less penalty than that of having my body severed in two, my bowels taken from thence and burned to ashes, the ashes scattered before the four winds of heaven that no more remembrance might be had of so vile and wicked a wretch as I would be, should I ever, knowingly, violate this my master mason's obligation. So help me God, and keep me steadfast in the due performance of the same. Worshipful master, you will detach your hands and kiss the book. In your present condition, what do you most desire? Candidate, prompted by conductor. Further light in masonry. Worshipful master, let him receive further light. 
conductor here takes off the hoodwink and removes the cable toe, and all around the altar place their hands in the position of the dewy guard of a master mason. The worshipful master gives one rap with his gavel, when all the brethren retire to their seats, leaving at the altar the master, conductor, and candidate. Worshipful master. Brother Gab, on receiving further light, you perceive more than you have heretofore. Both points of the compasses are elevated above the square, which is to teach you never to lose sight of those truly Masonic virtues, which are friendship, morality, and brotherly love. The master now steps back about three paces from the altar, and says, Brother Gab, you discover me approaching you from the east, under the Dewey Guard, some say. Step, Dewey Guard, and sign of the Master Mason. And, in token of the further continuance of my brotherly love and favor, I present you with my right hand, and with it the pass and token of the pass of a Master Mason. Takes the candidate by the real grip of a fellow craft, and says, your conductor will answer for you. Worshipful master. Will you be off or from? Conductor. From. Worshipful master. From what and to what? Conductor. From the real grip of a fellow craft to the pass grip of a master mason. Worshipful master. Pass. Conductor here instructs candidate to pass his thumb from the second joint to space beyond, which is the second space. Worshipful master looking conductor in the eye. What is that? Conductor. The pass grip of a master mason. Worshipful master. Has it a name? Conductor. It has. Worshipful master. Will you give it me? Conductor. I did not so receive it, neither can I so impart it. Worshipful master. How will you dispose of it? Conductor. I will letter it or halve it. Worshipful master. Halve it, and begin. Conductor. No, you begin. Worshipful master. Begin you. Conductor. Jew. Worshipful master. Ball. Conductor. Kayon. Pronounced by the conductor Turbal Kayon. Worshipful master. Lifting the candidate up. You will arise, and salute the junior and senior wardens as an obligated master mason. Here lodges differ in their mode of work. Some only pass the candidate around the lodge once and as he passes the junior and senior wardens he gives the master's sign. The master should instruct the candidate, and he generally does how to make the signs before he gets up from the altar, after taking the obligation. The following appears to be the proper way, after the candidate gets up from the altar, the conductor should lead him from the altar direct to the junior warden's station in the south, and give three raps on the floor with his rod, the junior warden responding by three raps with his gavel. Junior Warden who comes here? Conductor. Brother Gab, an obligated master mason. Junior Warden. How shall I know him to be such? Conductor. By the pass and token of the pass of a master mason. Junior Warden. Offering his hand to candidate. Advance the token. They take hold of each other's hands by the real grip of a fellow craft. Junior Warden. Will you be off, or from? Conductor. For candidate. From. Junior Warden. From what, and to what? Conductor. From the real grip of a fellow craft to the pass grip of a master mason. Junior Warden. Pass. They now pass to the pass grip of a master mason. Junior Warden. What is that? Conductor. The pass grip of a master mason. Junior Warden. Has it a name? Conductor. It has. Junior Warden. Will you give it me? Conductor. I did not so receive it. Neither can I so impart it. Junior Warden. How will you dispose of it? Conductor. I will letter or halve it. Junior Warden. Halve it, and begin. Conductor. No, you begin. Junior Warden. Begin you. Conductor. Jew. Junior Warden. Ball. Conductor. Kayon. Pronounced by Conductor Turbal Kayon. Junior Warden. The token is right and the pass is right. You will pass on to the senior warden's station in the west, for his examination. They then pass on to this officer's station, where the same questions and answers are repeated as at the junior warden's station, and he, the senior warden, suffers them to pass on to the worshipful master's station in the east. As they approach the worshipful master's station, he says, Worshipful master. Brother senior deacon, 
you will reconduct the candidate to the senior warden in the West, with my orders that you teach him how to wear his apron as a master mason. The conductor then turns about to the senior warden in the West, and says, Brother Senior Warden, it is the orders of the worshipful master that you teach this candidate how to wear his apron as a master mason. The senior warden approaches the candidate and ties the apron upon him, with the flap and corners turned down, and says, Master Masons wear their aprons with the flap and corners down, to designate them as Master Masons, or as overseers of the work, and so you will wear yours. The conductor now conducts the candidate back to the worshipful master in the East. Join us next week for the working tools of the Master Mason.